I know when I read the uh, the 50 principles of miracles at the beginning of A Course in Miracles, that was that was one of them that really jumped out at me. A, a number of them jumped out over the years, but the one that jumped out pretty early to me was miracles are involuntary and they should not be under conscious control. And when we're talking about the doer, the doer wants everything to be under conscious control. The doer is so concerned about behaviors and being, doing the right thing and uh, being correct and not making mistakes, the focus is always on the form and not on the mind. And uh, as we had a beautiful witness from Eska there in Japan, she loves her job, she's teaching English from 9 in the morning till 9 at night and she's having a ball and she's extending all this love and it's her attitude that's doing the teaching. She's not really teaching English, she's teaching love. And that's what all of us are called to do. Away from concern about outcomes and productivity and what does it mean to the world, it's, it's the feeling of love in our hearts and the extension of that love that is what it's all about. Even Helen Shuckman, the scribe of the Course, you know, she hung in there for a lot of years. Uh, it took seven years to bring through the Course, from 1965 to 1972, but then there came a time a little bit later in her life where she felt like, well, at least I did it. At least I completed the mission. And then Jesus basically told her, well, actually it wasn't about the Course. And she was like astonished, like, what? What do you mean? It's it wasn't about the Course. And Jesus said, I love you. It's all that, that was what it was all for. All that taking down those words, all those clarifying things and going back to sentences where there was resistance and getting it straight, you know, all that was just a backdrop for I love you. That's the only thing that is important. Not even the book itself was important to Jesus. It was the love, I love you. And that's what we're being asked to accept when we release the doer. So today I thought, uh, in, a, in a practical way, what we could talk about is, because um, most people have that question, always the question comes up, how? How do I undo the doer? Here I've got my pad and pencil ready, you just give me the formula and I will write it down and I will follow the steps like a good student and then at the end I'm undone. And you know, we know that, that the undoing involves forgiveness but the, that has to be under the Holy Spirit's guidance. You cannot take personal responsibility for the, the seeming journey. You cannot, as a person, direct the undoing because the person is the doer. <laughs> why, why would you put the doer in charge of the undoing? <laughs> that, that's not, doesn't sound very good, you know. <laughs> oh, I don't like the warden in this prison, so I'm just going to put uh, all the prisoners in charge <laughs> of the prison. Okay, our first decision is let's unlock all the doors <laughs> and, and get out of here, <laughs> you know. You, you can't look to the doer to do the undoing. You have to look to the Holy Spirit. And yet, there is no formula. So it's not like you can be given a formula. You can be given the essence of, of the teachings, which is what the Course is, but then you have to apply it. it. The practical application is what is needed. And Jesus even says that. A theoretical uh, basis is helpful. The text gives a theoretical basis, but it's in actually doing the exercises and experiencing that peace and happiness, that's where the undoing of the doer occurs. <clears throat>